So I'm, I'm happy to be here today to uh, talk to you about how we're improving highway safety and saving lives in Virginia with our um, traffic records electronic data system, or as we refer to it as TREDS. And it's playing a, a, a key role in uh, helping us to reduce uh, crashes, in injuries, and fatalities in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, so uh, apparently, uh, uh, this, this was a topic that we uh, have presented on here before at CCMTA, and, um, uh, but there have been some improvements and, uh, since the time that we reported. And uh, so we're very, uh, we were very fortunate and, and grateful to CCMTA to uh, have them uh, ask us to come back. In fact, uh, Rick <coughs> just presented on a, a, another topic, which is, uh, which is the reason that I'm here. Um, so I appreciate Rick letting me do this. Um, so what is TREDS? Well, in the, in the past couple of years, obviously I told you we've made some improvements and we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what TREDS is, um, why, uh, where we were before we had it, how we got it, and then uh, some of the improvements that we've made. And then I'm going to give, uh, hopefully, uh, the, the website will stay uh, stable enough so that I can give you a little bit of a, a live uh, walkthrough on uh, some of the features of TREDS. Um, first of all, I want to give you a snapshot of, of Virginia statistics because I think it's important to kind of put it in context uh, of where we are and, and you can kind of translate that um, in terms of um, your, your areas at home. Um, last year we, we, ha um, we had 70, 753 fatalities in Virginia. Um, that was about a 7.5% increase um, from the previous year, which was an all-time low. So we went from an all-time low of 700 to 753 in 2015. Um, currently, it's trending lower. Um, we have the two, our two biggest areas of concentration are seatbelt usage and um, alcohol-related fatalities and crashes. Um, seatbelt usage in Virginia is very low. Um, we're an 80.9% usage state. Um, the national average is uh, somewhere around 87% in the U.S. So we're, we're a low uh, seatbelt usage state. Um, and our unrestrained fatalities um, have um, unfortunately been on the rise. In, in 2015, 310, and that was a 17.5% increase over the previous year. So it's a major area of concentration for us. Um, Alcohol-related fatalities and crashes um, are moving in the opposite direction. That's the happy news story, uh, in Virginia anyway. Um, in 240 fatalities in 2015 were attributed to alcohol-related uh, crashes, and, uh, but that was the third consecutive year when they were in decline. Um, and we've, uh, our crashes in particular, uh, if, you, if, if just look at the alcohol-related crashes in particular in Virginia um, are at historically low levels right now and have been trending down now for about th three consecutive years. So we're having um, more success in that particular area than we are in seatbelt usage. Um, and then just finally to, to kind of draw some sort of a comparison, the, um, our um, fatalities per 100,000 population in Virginia is, is, was 8.6 in, in 20. 14. Um, so the most comparable province that I could find to that is Alberta, which was about 9.0, 9 I believe. So um, anyway, that gives you kind of a little context of, of where we are, uh, large picture um, in Virginia. Um, so TREDS is our single source uh, for crash data in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And TREDS uh, collects all of the crash reports uh, from local law enforcement. I would like to say that we collect them all electronically. Um, it's not 100%, it's about 91% right now, but we do collect, um, the, the way that we get our data is directly from the law enforcement officer who arrives at the scene, um, and we get that data directly most of the time from um, a laptop in the uh, officer's um, car. Um, 
and, and this data, of course, allows our safety partners to identify the problem areas and allocate resources to reduce crashes and injuries and fatalities in, in Virginia. It's also available to the public and available to um, citizens who are interested in the data. Um, um, you know, the various and sundry uh, ways that the, that the public might use this data is, is incalculable, incalculable. But, um, I mean, for example, you know, if you're interested in, in, um, in uh, you know, what the what the data is surrounding you know, where you want to live or where your kid goes to school or whatever however the the public would like to use it it's there and they can uh, run the data in many various ways and I'm going to show you some examples of how the public can run the data in a bit uh, the program is considered one of the best in the United States for for crash data analysis and uh, TREDS has led to several federal initiatives uh, to transmit data electronically making Virginia a technology leader in highway safety. So the genesis of the uh, program, which uh, I've been noted here, that it's an award-winning program. <laughs> it's, it's been uh, given a couple of awards recently, most recently by the Governor's Highway Safety Administration. Um, the genesis of the program was uh, in 2008. Um, when TREDS was just starting up, crash data was, was still being manually entered. And so what would happen was that a police officer would arrive at the scene and he, had, he or she had a form that they would fill out by hand. And it would take the officer um, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour just to fill out the form. The form was, uh, crash report was then, uh, after it was completed, had to be manually processed um, at DMV by uh, members of the TREDS back office. Um, at that point, uh, we had a, a staff do it, uh, doing that particular function of about 17 people. Uh, so we were proce processing about 120,000 crash reports manually each year. And because we were doing it manually, of course, it wasn't being done in a timely manner. So uh, it would take sometimes between eight well, normally, normally closer to the 12 months in order to, uh, to have any reliable data um, at our disposal. In addition, there wasn't a lot of interagency sharing between DMV, uh, the Department of Transportation, or state police. So when a crash occurred, the information would go to state police, who would manually enter it into their system. Then state police would send the crash report to DMV, where another person would manually enter it. Uh, and then finally it would go to VDOT, uh, Virginia Department of Transportation, VDOT, where someone else would enter it for VDOT's purposes. It was all the same information and it was all being done three times and I think that we can um, clearly ascertain that <coughs> not only is it in inefficient but it create, created many errors. Um, three people all doing the same thing. So then uh, we got a little um, nudge. We got a nudge by the U.S. Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. We heard from them today. And um, they had, uh, they actually um, rated crash uh, collection and we received its worst rating. So at that point, um, the red flag had been, had gone up the flagpole and we uh, were given a little bit of a nudge. Um, this is what they were concerned about. One of the things they were concerned about, um, if you look on the, uh, if you look on the, the right hand side there, that was the only, the, the area that's in red, uh, circled or in the red rectangle was the only information that we had at that time to report um, information about um, motor carrier crashes. Um, this, is how much information we now collect on uh, motor carrier crash. So you can see that has uh, been a significant a change since that time and, and certainly the amount of information. But it was obvious that our um, crash data reporting needed to change. And fortunately, DMV was uh, selected by FMCSA to pilot, um, uh, well, was selected for a pilot to improve uh, collection of crash data. And that's uh, when TREDS began. So 
DMV would become a clearinghouse then for all of the crash report information, and it made sense since we already held much of the driver record information. So we worked hard with other uh, stakeholders to create a new electronic crash report. And uh, officers from around the state, from big cities and counties to very small rural um, towns, um, had a say in, in every step of TREDS development. And we, we got input from a variety of stakeholders in developing the product. They, uh, they, get, they voiced their needs and concerns, and we considered all of their input and feedback during the entire process. And then once the uh, electronic crash report was complete, we then trained the officers in how to use it. Now, when I say it was complete, I'd, I'd like to add that it's never really complete. I mean, they're working every day to, in fact, I think there was just another data field that was added two months ago um, to, um, to the, the crash report. So it, because it's electronic now, it's something that once the once the determination has been made that, that a data point needs to be added, then it's something that can be added. Um, I think if the state police were sitting here right now, they would say, okay, <laughs> you know, moratorium on, on adding information because uh, it's, it's becoming, um, they, they can put so many things into the report now um, that I think it, it, they're beginning to think it might start, uh, you know, to be taking too much time to, to do again. But in any event, we are getting a tremendous amount of data from the officer at the scene in a, in a short period of time. We also uh, designed a new traffic safety database and we got rid of the old 25 year old system and then in 2009 we officially launched TREADS. So this is how it goes, this is how TREADS works from crash to analysis. Uh, um, when a crash occurs, the law enforcement officer arrives at the scene and he has his laptop and he has the, the uh, crash report on the laptop. Um, I told you about 91% of uh, officers are doing this electronically. Well, it's 91% of jurisdictions. There are, there are actually two jurisdictions now that are not doing it. One of them, though, happens to be the largest county in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So we have a little bit of work to do. And um, I'm thinking that the next time you guys meet uh, next year, we will have them on board definitely, and maybe the second jur jurisdiction as well. Um, but about 91% use it. Um, and once it's submitted, it goes, it's a secure submission, and it goes uh, directly to, um, to DMV. Um, for those that are still using the paper, the form looks exactly the same, but it's, uh, it's transmitted um, um, physically to us. And uh, then electronic reports are ready for back, uh, the back office to process um, on average in about six days. So we went from having data that was accurate and reliable in 12 months to data that's now accurate and reliable in six days. Um, which is a tremendous benefit to everybody who needs to use this data, to be able to look at data that's, you know, a week old, as opposed to looking at data that's a year old. Um, I told you that we had 17 employees in the back office before the project. There are now five. And what do those five people do? So th those five people are, well, I told you, there's 9% that still send uh, manually, so they're inputting it manually. Um, that's two of them. The other three are um, maintaining or are, are checking on the integrity of the data because there are still uh, instances um, when the data contradicts itself and it sends up, uh, we've built into threads a uh, certain um, ways for the software to look at the data that's coming in and say, you know, this is inconsistent. This can't happen. It can't be that um, the road condition was sunny and that the crash occurred at 1 a.m. So when a condition like that, which contradicts itself, um, pops up, somebody has to figure out how to, to put the data in balance. And, and so data integrity is, is a big part of what this back office group still does. Um,
So earlier I mentioned that there used to be a lack of interagency sharing, and uh, now, of course, um, TREDS is easily accessible to all of our partners, including the Virginia State Police and uh, the Virginia Department of Transportation, um, who are, are given um, very good access to the data, um, uh, and, and they can manipulate the data in many ways. Uh, Crash data report is sent to DMV and entered in TREDS, and once it's been entered, the information is available to uh, both of those agencies and the public as well. Um, security is, is tight on uh, as to um, what access the person gets. Um, state police officers have a particular defined access to the data. VDOT um, employees have a, a a defined access to the data. I have a defined access to the data. I don't get full access. Um, so everybody's access to the data is is secure. It's tight. Um, we need to make sure that uh, that sensitive information is is maintained and the people get access to the information they need, but but nothing more. Um, so let's talk a lot. Let's talk about Treads features because Treads has a lot of um, really great features that make the data um, in, very useful for law enforcement and our safety partners and the public. So let me highlight some of them. Um, there are so many factors that can lead to a crash, the weather and the road conditions, um, alcohol, uh, speed, uh, distraction. There's just, you know, the list is, is, is um, it just goes on and on. And um, right now, TREDS can analyze data by 150 different uh, data points, so, uh, and that con number continues to grow. We keep adding different data points each year. Um, we have a tremendous partnership with, um, with uh, Virginia Tech, um, and Virginia Tech uh, takes our data and uh, imports the crash location that uh, is then um, generate uh, that, that we then generate maps of our uh, data of the crashes and, and injuries and fatalities and submit that information on uh, you know uh, map form to law enforcement um, and to some of our other safety partners and uh, they can use that data when they're uh, we'll get into how they use that data later but Virginia Tech helps us to pinpoint exact locations on um, on the, the, the GPS information, uh, put it on maps so we can use it in mapping. Um, we can also identify specific medical terms, and this is important, um, such as seizure or illness. Uh, if that's involved, if, if, if there's a seizure is, is, uh, results in a crash, um, then that information can be trans, uh, transmitted directly to uh, DMV's medical review office so that they can take action on um, if, if action needs to be taken. In addition to what we get from those electronic crash reports, we also share a lot of information back and forth with, with uh, emergency medical services such as the medical examiner's office, vital records, and uh, ambulatory service teams. So information is shared with safety programs also, like uh, we have our, uh, our major um, seat belt enforcement um, every year is called our uh, Click It or Ticket, and uh, so we'll, we will share information with uh, Click It or Ticket, um, you know, law enforcement for the Click It or Ticket campaign, also for Checkpoint Strike Force, which is our um, annual campaign um, t to, uh, you know, roadside stops for alcohol enforcement. And uh, we also um, share information that we obtain from motorcycle training programs. So sharing all of this data allows DMV to get a better picture of our crash outcomes. We've partnered also, and this is a, a, a new partnership, uh, relatively new, that we have with uh, Virginia Alcohol Safety Action Program. And um, I want to We'll stop a little bit and, and, and tell you that in Virginia we have uh, what we call an all offender um, law, which means that every uh, conviction in Virginia um, is every offender is required to um, to uh, have um, an 
an interlock placed on their car. So uh, they sat, the Virginia Alcohol Safety Action Program is responsible um, for tracking the interlock and the whole process. And um, they had been doing that manually um, ever since the program started. And um, what they did was they put in, they, they, they realized that it was uh, cumbersome for them once all offender came along. Um, there were going to be many, many, many more um, you know, uh, interlocks placed on cars, and it was going to be impossible for them to continue to do this uh, manually. So they decided they were going to put in a, a grant proposal to have uh, somebody, uh, you to get money to have um, somebody uh, build a system for them or to buy a system. And we ended up telling them, hey, you know, we could do this as part of TREADS, and we could build it for you. And uh, since we already work with you on interlock programs, and so uh, the upshot was that we did, and uh, we built this uh, system for VASAP that that tracks the interlock processing, and um, it's it's really been a tremendous benefit, uh, both for them and, and for us, really. Um, so what it does is that. Uh, VASAP office electronically begins a new case every time that they get a case from the courts uh, via TREADS interlock system and the offender's inf information is electronically transmitted to an uh, ignition interlock vendor and then the vendor contacts the offender and gets the device installed and once it's installed the TREADS ignition interlock system generates an, automatic, an automated alert to the VASAP office uh, to ensure that the offender is in compliance with uh, ignition interlock requirements. And so all of this is done electronically and, and it, that used to take um, months and, and, and now it's, it's done very quickly and, and all electronically. So over the past two years, DMV has worked hard to improve and add some upgrades to TREADS and I want to <coughs> show you uh, some of those. Um, my favorite one is the high crash location map. <clears throat> um, our staff calls it clusters. And this, this allows uh, law enforcement, but really also the public, and I'll show you that it's on our DMV website, to uh, select um, a year and a road type, either interstate or non-interstate, and use a map to view where the most crashes are occurring. Um, and they put the top 15 cluster locations on the map. Um, and then you, they can drill down on each cluster and they can see exactly where on, on the roads they occurred and they show you by color whether or not they were um, fatal um, injury involved or, um, or uh, whether it was just uh, um, you know, a, a crash that did not result in an injury. Um, and that's in green. So you'll see this in a minute. but. Um, and then the user can actually go down to street level on Google Maps and, and look exactly where the, where the crashes are occurring. So I'm going to walk you through it. So here's, the, here's our DMV website. I put this up there in case the, the, the internet system, uh, you know, I didn't have access to internet if the Wi-Fi wasn't working. But I do, so I'll be able to do this in a minute. But here, real quick, DMV website which I told you before Rick came in, we can do 41 different transactions on the website. Maybe it's 42 now, I don't know. But, and this is, um, so if you see the highway safety is circled red, if you click on that, you get to here, and you can click on um, many things, but one of them is um, create an interactive, I mean, uh, explore high crash location map. And there it is. So up at the top, you would click on the year, and we'd pick 20, 2015 or whatever, road type, uh, non-interstate, let's say. And then, yeah, there you go. And, uh, and then you can see that it is now populated, um, if you can see them, four, I mean, 15 uh, blue numbers there as locations. And if we clicked on one of them, oh, this is the one that's the number one. Um, this is an area in my town, in Richmond, Virginia, that's um, number 14, actually. It's the number 14 um, highest 
ranked cluster in, in the state. And you can see that um, the, the greens are, did not in, include injuries, did not involve an injury. Uh, the, the yellows involved an injury but did not involve fatal, so there weren't any fatals on this street. Um, and then, as, if you're familiar with the street view that, that Google Maps allows you, if you take the little Google person and you drop, drop the Google person on the map, you go down to street level, and that's what it gives you. So now you can see down to the street level where the crashes are occurring. I'll just point out, this, this is a very heavily traveled, very congested um, suburban area of sprawl. And there are stoplights all, and, and you'll see that these are mostly just property damage crashes um, because they're fender benders, you know. Um, but um, it, it also is the 14th highest area of, of, of crashes or the 14th most dangerous uh, location in, in the state. So w what I love about this personally is that I can look at this and, and I can tell you that I, I don't want to live close to that. <laughs> um, and I don't want to work close to that. I don't want my, my son going to school close to that. Um, and I've also had this thought. If Google can tell you the quickest way and the shortest way and the way that doesn't involve any tolls, can't they also tell you the safest way to get somewhere? So what we've got using Google Maps right now is incorporating our data into a Google Map, which, you know, if we're, if we're thinking about, if this is really about, um, if, if we're starting to think outside the box and how we can sort of drive those numbers towards zero, maybe we can get people to start driving a safer way to school or to work just by giving them the information. How do you avoid a high crash zone? Well, you can do it by going around this, this spot. So maybe that's something that we can do in the future. But right now, if you're driving in Virginia and you want to avoid a high cluster crash location, you can do it by going on the DMV website. And I think that's, that's exciting. Um, this tells you, uh, when you click on one of them, it tells you, it gives you information about that. You know? So this particular crash, the one, the farthest one on the left is in yellow. Um, so there was an injury involved, one injury. Um, you can see it has the exact latitude and longitude. Um, tells you the jurisdiction. It was in Henrico County. It was on Broad Street. No, no fatalities. And it gives you the time and, and date. So that's, that's kind of cool, I think. This is a, it is a somewhat limited version of what you could get if you were a uh, state trooper or uh, if you were a, a, a police, if you were law enforcement or if you were VDOT or, or DMV. Um, it's, it's a somewhat limited version of that. But this is our crash data reporting system that any member of the public um, can pull up. And so you just, you enter in the information that you want. You start date and, and end date. If you're looking for all crashes in this example, it would be in January. Um, and in, in the city of Richmond, or no, in the Richmond region, in the county of Henrico, um, and you want to group the outcome by month, well, it would only be two months, I guess. And then you want to filter your crashes by alcohol-related, then this is what you end up with. So in, in the month of January, there were 33 crashes, no fatalities, and 18 injuries in Henrico County in crashes that involved an alcohol, in crashes that were alcohol-related. So, and then you can begin to drill down on some of that stuff. Um, but if, if you were looking for that type of information, then, then TREDS can give it, can give it to you uh, if you're the general public. Um, but really the people who use this um, are our safety partners, whether it's the, the enforcement or, um, or some of our other highway safety partners. So, all right, here we go. Um, how does VDOT, VDOT um, uses our, our data, obviously, to, um, they run all of their reports using TREDS data. Um, 
and they use, uh, you know, they use our data and the highway safety improvements are prioritized based on things like, you know, paving and grading and, and sign improvements, installations. Our data can really help pinpoint areas where they're having problems and then they can go look at those problems and figure out how to, uh, how to fix them. Okay, so how do, we, how do we help law enforcement and some of our other safety partners um, with the data that we collect? And um, one of the answers is through heat maps. Um, what we do when, when we're in a, when we're in, in the phase where we are, are getting um, a grant, uh, accepting grant proposals, um, and I'll back up a little bit and, and, just, and just point out, as the previous speaker in here did, that the way that, that uh, the, the Highway Safety Office works with uh, grant money is that the federal government, NHTSA, um, has money that it sends to the states um, to the Highway Safety Office, the Governor's Highway Safety Offices. And each state has a Governor's Highway Safety Office. And then that Highway Safety Office sends the money to um, uh, agencies through um, grant proposals. They write grant proposals, give it to us, and then we give them the money. So one of the things that we do whenever we um, give them their grants is that we, for example, will give to Henrico County law enforcement a copy of Henrico County heat maps. And this is what a, a heat map is. I've got a little bit of a, a close-up here. It, um, Oh, let me go. There we go. So this is a heat map, and <clears throat> when we give it to them, this is Henrico County unrestrained related crashes. Um, we give them we give them heat maps in unrestrained and alcohol related, um, in bicycle and pedestrian, and several different um, emphasis areas. And and this is what Virginia Tech. One of the things that Virginia Tech does for us. Um, you'll see that. Uh, you'll see the, the red is where we have um, fatalities that have occurred um, that were unrestrained. And the yellow is, uh, with the, with the, uh, the yellows are um, injuries of various levels, either serious injury or um, not as serious injury. And, and then you'll also see the area that looks like it's sort of a deeper blue. And those are areas of high concentration. Those are sort of those cluster areas that we were talking about. And when we return, when we um, give grants to the various uh, law enforcement agencies, um, we'll say, okay, here's your speed enforcement grant. Now, here's the problem areas that you've had where speed was an issue. You've had, uh, you see these areas of, of dark blue. Well, you have a cluster in this particular area of crashes that were speed related. So, Law enforcement in Henrico County, that might be a place you might want to put some of your resources. Um, same thing with, with unrestrained crashes. If you have, if I were law enforcement in Henrico County and I'm looking at an area um, along a, a corridor where I have crashes and even fatalities in, in dark blue areas of unrestrained persons, I might be looking to give uh, seatbelt tickets in that particular area. And so that's where they should put their resources. So this has been a tremendous benefit to law enforcement. Um, it's, it's also been a tremendous benefit to some of our other uh, state agency and nonprofit um, partners whose um, mission is not uh, enforcement, but whose mission is, is education, because then they can target particular areas in the state where we have these issues. Um, so our heat maps have really been a huge benefit. I'm going to go back one slide. Um, this is given to them um, with, the, uh, with the map itself. Um, this gives them the number of, uh, again, this is an unrestrained crash stat, and it gives them the number of fatal, the number of serious injuries. It gives them the highest time periods, the highest days, the highest months. It gives them a tremendous amount of information. And then, of course, they can go, get on treads themselves and drill down even farther in that information. But this is, this is just something that we give every single time that we um, pass out uh, grants to, to various agencies. Or any time, really, they ask for it. 
the quality of the data that we're collecting has dramatically improved since we um, since we lost tread since we launched treads uh, many fewer mistakes um, uh, with the electronic crash reports um, obviously we do still uh, verify the the data so uh, we're still you know looking at all the data but there's so many fewer uh, mistakes that are made I'll give you an example one of the things that we've just had to fix recently with one of those jurisdictions that didn't that's not playing ball with us in terms of electronic reporting. There's an area where the officer is supposed to put in an, a, a narrative about the crash. They can write, um, I think it's a thousand characters, a thousand character narrative. Well, if you're doing it and you're handwriting it, you don't know what a thousand <laughs> characters is. But if you're doing it digitally, then it will stop you. But we had one jurisdiction that was basically writing us a novel about every one of these crashes. And um, they were repeating things that were found other places in the crash report. So we actually had to sit down and say, well, if you were doing this electronically, you wouldn't be having this problem. And um, about three weeks later, they, they went electronic. Um, but now there are fewer errors. Um, and all state and local law enforcement agency, I mean, uh, the, the uniformity really is what helps cut down on the mistakes. And the crash report is very intuitive, um, so it helps prevent the entry of invalid data, like I just tried to point out. Um, efficiency is, is a really good way to describe treads. Electron electronic crash reports are ready on average, like I said, in six days, and the information updates nightly. So that uh, that you can run that data, um, it, it will update tonight, and we will have yesterday's data on the on the crash reports. And it has saved us an estimated f uh, five hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars per year just in personnel costs. And the average time to electronically complete a crash report is 15 minutes now compared to 45 minutes manually. TREAD's ability to correctly locate crashes has been instrumental in helping save lives on Virginia's roadways. It helps identify street level problems, it helps law enforcement allocate resources to specific locations where they're needed, and it helps identify any road engineering improvements that uh, may need to be uh, made. And finally, this data is accessible, as I showed you, on our website, dmvnow.com, to both the private and the public sector. And I want to, since, since this is working, I did load up the website so that we can go on and just quickly look at it. And then... I want to show you the clusters first. Okay, so so this is how simple it is, and this is why I think it's really cool. Um, let's do uh, let's see how 2016 is looking, and let's do non-interstate roads. Let's see if that area that I just talked about is still as dangerous this year. I guarantee you, it will be. Oh, it looks like it's now number four. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so it's 2016, so we don't have as many um, crashes this year. But this is, uh, here's the little Google guy. And then you drop him right there. And then boom. So we're <laughs> on cue, right? It's rush hour. <laughs> and uh, so you can see um, the locations of the crash. See that this one right here was in an intersection, and it's an injury. That shouldn't surprise anyone in this room. Um, so um, that's a that's a really interesting feature, I think. And I will say that since we made the screenshot, we have made one improvement. I think it's a major improvement, really, on this on on what you can do on the crash report. So I showed you that last one. Um, we, I showed you a, uh, that we ran, I think it was unrestrained. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you now a, a change that we've made recently that I think is really interesting. 
Um, I'm going to just select all there. I'm going to group by month. Now, what we can do, what we've added now are these little check boxes. So it used to be that you could only pick one thing. You could only pick all crashes, or you could pick alcohol related, or you could pick bicycle involved. Now, I can add, I can check alcohol related and unrestrained, for example. So, so if I want to get information about, um, and let's do Henrico, in, well, let's do Richmond City. So, is that the short pub area? On yes, the there? it is, yeah. I stayed there, yeah. Yeah. So, so now it allows you to pick, you know, several different data points together. Um, you know, and, and show that uh, you know the folks that are folks that are crashing and uh, unrestrained. You know, this is how many of them were also uh, you know uh, had been drinking as well. So, um, and that can m more narrowly target something if you're if you're local law enforcement. Um, so that is uh, the essence of treads, and um, I think that that you know. Yes, it's data. It's it's not it it, but th the data drives everything in highway safety, and we have to have access to reliable, but also you know current data. And what what I think sometimes we get frustrated with, um, and I know the general public gets frustrated with, is when they look at statistics that come from the federal government and it's a year and a half behind, but now they've got access on through a DMV website to information that is updated and is pretty accurate within about six days. Um, and of course, we, we know that alcohol lags that, right? Because we have to wait for, for the lab to run it and, and come back. And so alcohol gets, alcohol is one of those uh, statistics that, that can be two or three months behind because of the time it takes to get it back from the lab. But, Unrestrained, I guarantee you that that the statistics on unrestrained crashes, fatalities, and injuries are up to date in Virginia six days, you know, a week, basically, a week out. So uh, it's been a huge improvement, and um, and hopefully that you've learned something valuable about what we're doing in Virginia. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it.